An ABC News exclusive, the mother of a 14-year-old who died last month after falling from a Florida amusement park ride, speaking about her heartbreak. This is not an accident. It's not. As she files a wrongful death lawsuit only on GMA this morning. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. We're back now with an ABC exclusive interview with the mother of a 14-year-old who fell to his death last month at a Florida amusement park, speaking about her heartbreaking loss and the lawsuit she's now filing and why. Lindsay Davis, I know you had a chance to speak with her. Good morning. You know, you certainly don't have to be a mother to understand this mother's anguish. She says that he was her, her walking teddy bear, and the family called him Big Tick, not only because he was big, but because he was so good at football, they said that he was the next big ticket out of St. Mm. Louis. But then a ride at an amusement park during spring break ended his life and all that promise. This is not an accident. It's not. Nakia Dodd says she's still in shock and denial, still expecting her son Tyree to walk through the front door. The 14-year-old died last month after falling from this amusement park ride. My heart instantly dropped because I'm knowing this is not a good call. And she just, he didn't make it. And I just, and I just bought it. Tyree Sampson had been visiting Icon Park in Orlando for spring break with family friends when he boarded the free fall ride. The park touts the new ride, which debuted in December, as the world's tallest freestanding drop tower. At 430 feet high, reaching speeds of up to 75 miles per hour as riders descend while tilting and spinning. But the night of March 24th, Tyree fell to his death, falling out of his seat during the ride. The ride was going, and during the middle of the ride, the, the guy just came off. Paramedics rushed him to the hospital, where he was declared dead. Now his parents are filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the amusement park, the ride's operator, and manufacturer, saying their negligence led to Tyree's death. This could have been prevented. It could have been prevented. It should have been prevented. So, as an operator, you have a job to check those rides. You know, to be honest, uh, that was not done. That was not done. So. And if it was, that should be done more than once, you know. According to a preliminary report released by investigators, a forensic engineering firm hired by the state of Florida concluded that Tyree was not properly secured in the seat the night he died and that a safety sensor had been manually adjusted to allow a larger gap between the restraint harness and the seat. This image, taken from bystander video of the incident, shows the gap in Tyree's seat. While the average restraint opening for other passengers was 3.3 inches, according to the report, Tyree's was 6 to 7 inches. Investigators say Tyree slipped through the gap between the seat and the harness as the ride slowed. His harness was still in the down position when the ride came to a stop. Tyree's family says he'd still be alive today had there just been a seatbelt. From the moment this was designed, it was designed without a secondary restraint. Do you feel that a $22 seatbelt would have saved Tyree's life? 100%. Tyree was an honor roll student and a football player called Big Tick by friends and family. Six foot two and 380 pounds, according to the suit. His family claims Tyree should have never been on the ride because of his size, which has a maximum passenger weight of about 287 pounds. They claim there were no signs displaying the size restrictions. You feel that this could potentially be criminal? Law enforcement should be looking forward to it, and, and I, I probably expect that to, to come about. An attorney for the ride's operator, Orlando Slingshot, released a statement to ABC News saying they are fully cooperating with the investigation and that all protocols, procedures, and safety measures provided by the manufacturer of the ride were followed. It, apparently, there's social media video that was posted of, of this. Have you seen it? Yes. Again, as a mother that had to go through this, I heard different stories, and I was told, no, don't watch it, don't watch it. I had to. She says her rationale for filing the lawsuit is to try to prevent this from ever happening again. I want the ride gone, gone, because it shouldn't have taken a child or anyone to lose their life to put laws in place. This should, could have been prevented. What is keeping you together? family. I have a nine-year-old daughter. I can't, I have to, you know, as much as it's 
eat me up and inside, I have, still have to be strong for her. The Orlando free fall is closed pending a full investigation. Mom's attorney says the bottom line here is negligence, and they also want to figure out who manipulated the sensors on the ride prior to the night of March 24th. The attorney says that it's a miracle this had not happened before. Mm. And it was partly because of his size his that he size. was able to push it. They're saying because of the G-force yeah. on the way back down, that even though there was that seven-inch opening, that it would, uh, actually opened 11 inches at mm. that point when he was coming down. Oh. All right, Lindsay, thank you.